Hello everybody and welcome to this 18th chapter in the Java E7 tutorial series. Today we'll be talking about the Java API for WebSocket, an application protocol that provides a full duplex communication between two peers over the TCP protocol. So an introduction to WebSockets. The traditional request response model has a very serious limitation. The server can only send data to the client only when the client sends a request to the server. This creates a very static feeling user experience. Now WebSocket solves this issue entirely by its full duplex communication, allowing the server and the client to send requests and response whenever they want. In the WebSocket application, the server publishes a WebSocket endpoint, and the client uses the endpoint's URI to connect to it. This makes sending data to and from the server and the client accessible anytime the connection is open and they can close the connection at any moment. This is referred to as the WebSocket handshake, where any party can back out if any of the terms are unfavorable. Now the Java API for WebSockets allows you to create endpoints in two ways. Either you can programmatically make endpoints, which extend endpoint and implement its methods, or you can use the annotated endpoint, which is decorated as a Java class with annotations. So this class over here echoes any messages that come through. It extends the endpoint class, which defines three lifecycle methods, on open, on close, and on error. This class only implements the on open method, which is the only method that uh, is required for you to implement. Now the annotated endpoints are much simpler and deploys automatically with the application. We will be using this method much more than a programmatic endpoint because it's so much easier to understand and to use. So one thing that you want to make sure is since the container creates a new instance for every endpoint class, you can use and store data from these instances to reduce having to do a WebSocket handshake every single time a connection is broken and connected again. This following endpoint replies to incoming text messages with the context of the previous message. This means that whenever you create a connection, the, it basically like exchanges data. So whenever the connection is broken again, when the connection is put back together, you don't have to do the handshake all over again. You can just show that, hey, I got this, you gave this to me, and the other guy will be like, all right, cool. So uh, let's take a look at path parameters. The server endpoint annotation allows you to customize the URIs that can be used to access an endpoint, like the example over here. Using this annotation, users can connect to any endpoint in any of the following URIs. You can see over here that you need chat rooms, so all of these are chat rooms, and our room name, which can be different for whatever you, uh, one you want. In this example over here, uh, it uses the server endpoint to decide a room name depending on what the user wants. Now, you can also make methods that take care of errors like connection problems, runtime errors, and message ha handlers, or conversion errors when decoding messages. Now that you got all that, let's take a look at this example of Duke ETF2. So now that we're inside our NetBeans, let's go ahead and open our project. So inside our uh, web, let's go into WebSocket and click Duke ETF2. So this example demonstrates how to use WebSocket endpoints to provide data to update web clients. The example resembles a service that provides periodic updates on the price and trading volume of an electronically traded fund or ETF. So the first thing that we want to take a look at is our endpoints over here. So the way we get there is our source packages over here and click double click that. Inside here, what I want to see is uh, this ETF, um, this endpoint, what it does is it stores all of the connected sessions in a queue, which you can see over here. So you don't have to worry about doing a handshake um, if the connection is broken. It would uh, check the queue. If the queue is, um, like, if the stuff matches up, then you don't have to worry about that. Then there's the send method, which, uh, ha which is called when the enterprise bean has something new to add. So if, I, if it has something new to add, then it will add something to the queue. And finally, there's the on open, on close, and on error. They do exactly what they say. When you open the connection, it says open connection. When you close the connection, you close the connection. 
And when an error happens, an error is thrown. Now let's take a look at our managed be or enterprise bean. And this bean, all it does is it updates our data every second by calling the send method over here. You can see that the price is randomly changed every second. The volume is changed every second. And it calls the send method by pressing, uh, by sending this price and volume into that. And it goes into here and it will um, then, um, it will show what the price and volume is every second. Finally, let's take a look at our HTML page, the thing that we are introduced to, our index.html. Over here, you will see that it's just a few, it's just a table and some JavaScript code. And this JavaScript code, what it does is it uses the WebSocket API to connect to a server endpoint, this guy over here, and uh, it creates a callback method for incoming messages. The callback method then updates the page with new information. So now that you got all that, let's go ahead and uh, do our stuff. So let's check out um, this guy is, all right, let's start our Glassfish server. And let's go ahead and right click this and click build. And once it's done, let's go into our Google Chrome and put in this URL. And uh, you will see that it's the exact same example that you've seen in the previous chapter. But the only difference is this is using WebSocket instead of using HTTP. Now that we're done with that, let's take a look at our, this is honestly one of my favorite examples, our WebSocket bot example. Inside our NetBeans, let's go ahead and open a project and click on WebSocket bot. And this example demonstrates how the WebSocket endpoint can be used in a chat that users can join and have a conversation. Alternatively, users can ask simple questions to a bot that is always available. Honestly, what I want to do right now is I want to show you what I'm talking about. So go ahead, start your Glassfish server and click build. So once that's done building, let's go into our Google Chrome and type in this URL. There we go. And um, this is actually, all right, so let's put in our name called Viprov, let's click join. And you can see that it says Viprov has joined a chat and Duke, which is our computer, is telling us, hi there. And you can see the users that are inside that is currently inside this WebSocket bot. So uh, let's say, um, let's try out a few things. Um, first of all, let's, you can see this box over here, you can type in inside here. And uh, you can put stuff like, for example, uh, let's say at Duke, um, let's ask him, how are you? And Duke will reply with, I'm doing great, thank you. And let's try something else. Let's do something like Duke, let's ask Duke. Oh, let's ask Duke, um, when is, your birthday. I wonder what it is. Um, let's try that. So Duke will reply with my birthday is May 23rd. Thank you for asking. You can also join the chat from another browser by copy pasting this and going to another browser. Go ahead like that. And you can put another name. Let's call this guy Pranav. And he wants to join the chat. And you can see that Viprov and Pranav are users that you can join in the chat. Now what's cool about this is that I can actually text myself, Viprov, hey. And if I go back to this guy right here, whoops. If I go back over here, you can see, actually, let me do that. Okay. You can see that, um, like you could see from Viprov's um, angle that Pranav is saying hey to Viprov. And I can actually talk to Pranav right here. So let's say Pranav, hey. And I have replied to Pranav with, hey. Now, what if Pranav leaves? Let's close this guy. And you can see that Pranav has left the chat. Now, that's the cool part about um, WebSocket, that you, can, uh, you don't have to worry about sending requests and re uh, like the server sending responses back. All you can do is send requests and send responses to your heart's desire. One more thing that you can see is you can see the WebSocket uh, console and you can see all the JSON code that's going on in the background. 
and that's it for this example um other than that there is just um i mean i could go through this code but it's kind of a lot um you can see that the endpoint over here is well this is our endpoint you know what endpoints are uh this is our bean so this one will uh give like the responses for the you know like it's asking how are you then it will say good thank you like the duke will respond with that there is also chat messages, which this is just a managed bean that um, represents the chat message. The chat, chat message encoder, which encodes all your strings to JSON. Your message decoder, which uh, encodes all your JSON to strings back again. And your index.xhtml, the stuff that's actually, you know, like actually like you could see. And that's it for this um, example. And that wraps it up for today's tutorial, everybody. Um, I hope you understand how great WebSocket can be when used to its fullest extent. And you can understand how the full duplex communication is incredible sometimes. But um, other than that, um, we'll be seeing um, JSON processing in the next tutorial. So uh, we talked about JSON right now, but we'll talk about JSON more in um, detail in the next chapter. But until then, I will see you in the next video.